Getting the U-joint bellows off was a pain in the butt. Um, there it is. I ended up grabbing the end of it with some pliers and trying to pull it out. That wasn't coming, so in the end I, I reached back in and was able to just kind of yank on it and pull it out. Finally got it um, after loosening the ring. So, all right, but you can tell this has got some rust and some, some corrosion in it. And uh, it's because there was a leak in it. So, I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit and start getting the other stuff off. So, really, all I'm gonna do now is is loosen the uh, the other the other uh, bellows. So, I'm gonna loosen this guy. This actually was broken. This was the shift cable bellows. It's the exhaust bellows. Well, loosen that from this side and over on this side you can see uh, or for the the exhaust bellows over here back in the in the corner there's actually a, a hole on this side that you can reach through that you can reach through with a screwdriver to, to get these ones so we're gonna work on that this one's hole over here you actually need to get quite a long uh, Um, screwdriver. Hopefully you can see that because I have no idea where I'm pointing because the sun's in the way. There it is. Yeah, the screwdriver they had was kind of a standard size and it wasn't long enough. Ooh, this guy's going to be tight so I'm going to take my hand away and use two hands on it. Can't get the sinking oil hose um, so I'm going to try using the heat gun. I imagine I've got to be a little careful because I think there's a plastic fitting up there. Yeah, oh yeah, there's a plastic fitting. Heat did the trick. Now I've just got to get uh, this little wire off, this little cable. So I'm going to cut those zip ties there and uh, see how it goes. Also need to get it unplugged from there. Shouldn't be a problem though. But it leads from here along the bell housing. It was clamped to the oil hose and uh, it goes right here. That's the thing that I unplugged earlier um, near near this the uh, shift shaft or something. All right, so uh, AutoZone went and got these uh, rear axle bearing removers. All right, finally I was able to get it off. I had to switch over to the small uh, bearing removal tool, but got it. The slide hammer. All right, it's getting a little late. It's, um, I don't know what time it is. It's 8.30 here. It's starting to get a little dark. Uh, sun's gone down, so I'm gonna call it quits. And, uh, Next time I video, hopefully I'll be able to get the gimbal bearing in, start installing the bellows, and uh, just start putting stuff back together. And hopefully it'll go well. So far, so good. So last video, I think I'm gonna put the all the tubes and bellows on here right now that I can get to. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll install the gimbal bearing next. I have no idea. I decided to try to install the gimbal bearing so um, this has a little mark on it up, up top um, I've seen other places that said uh, that needs to point up and that would make sense because over here along the side it's got a, uh, a little hole and it corresponds to a hole right back there which is where this zerk is uh, so that's where the grease goes in now I have removed this piece uh, just to uh, I think I'm going to apply some grease quickly to this, <clears throat> put a little bit of grease in it and uh, around the edges and then uh, I'll put some grease also on this uh, fitting and then I'll go ahead and try to install it and tap it in and see how it goes. I hope that this is supposed to stay in place. Um, I don't want to pull it out and it seems to be okay. Um, I might double check on that but I'm going to go ahead and install. Man, I've got a mess. So, the fact that I've got everything torn apart, um, 
gives me a little bit of a problem because I've got all this stuff taken uh, taken off, and the typical procedure for, for example, reinstalling the uh, the gimbal bearing, I don't need to take the bell housing off. Um, this here is my bell housing. I don't normally need to take that off if I'm simply installing a gimbal bearing. Uh, oh, and if I'm removing uh, the exhaust bellows, I also don't need to uh, take off the, the bell housing. Um, so all this stuff needs to be done, and well, it doesn't need to be done, but it's typically done in a certain sequence. Certain sequence. If I need to remove um, certain items, I don't need to, to uh, take off every single piece. Um, but since I'm, I'm removing and reinstalling all the bellows, I did need to do that. So typically, when you reinstall a gimbal bearing, um, you need you don't need to take off the, the bellows, you don't need to take off the bell housing, and you need special tools to tap, to tap it in. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and install it um, best I can with a rubber mallet, and I'm just going to tap it in as close as I can. I'll need to use my, my uh, hopefully I, I don't need to, hopefully because it's in the mail, but I, I typically will need an, an alignment tool uh, that I don't have yet, it's in the mail. So. I'm going to install the gimbal bearing and it's important to make sure the flanges of the gimbal bearing these, these flanges face inside as you'll notice on this side those uh, those flanges are, are not present so over here these little guys need to face the inside of the boat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and install it, tap it in, and once again, you need to make sure that that hole right there lines up with this hole here. Um, this outer this outer ring right here, this uh, ribbed ring, is, is movable. So um, if you don't see this hole, just move it around until you do. And I'm going to go ahead and try to tap that in. I'm going to use this 2x4. Start tapping it in here with my rubber mallet. Okay, got my gimbal bearing in. Uh, now I'm going to try to install the water hose. It goes back here, and I figure it's it, since it's further back from where my U joint bellers are going to be, it might be difficult to get to. So uh, this is the hose I need to put onto it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and heat it with my heat gun. Um, getting it off was, was kind of a pain, and I had to use heat to pull it off. And in heating it up, you have to be careful because what I did is ruin uh, my trim sending unit, I think. I melted these wires here. So that's not good. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. Um, yeah. So, actually it looks like I might be able to just take this top piece off and, and maybe replace them. Um, anyway, I'm going to... Uh, Heat up my hose and install it back there. All right, I was able to get the cable on or the hose on. It was a very tight fit, so I'm glad I used the heat. Now I just got to screw in and clamp. Next, I'm going to install the exhaust bellows. I go down here. Uh, you do need to apply uh, bellows adhesive to uh, both the bellow and also to the transom assembly. So I'm going to do that now, and uh, should be a quick, and easy install. And that bellows adhesive is sticky, so uh, I was able to get it on, but now I've got to go and come in from the side and uh, tighten it down, coming in from this little hole on the side of the transom assembly. Next, we got our U joint bellows, and uh, it's going to follow the same procedure. I'm going to put the um, hose clamp here along the side so I can reach it with a screwdriver. But that's where we're going next bellows adhesive on the bellows and on the transom assembly and install remember where this thing goes I don't even know what it is this little hold on bud I don't know what this hose does but I remember it was zip tied to this water hose so I'm going to try to remember how it oh I remember now okay it fit so this water hose connects here and this just goes down if I remember correctly. Um, okay, I remember. 